So if there are no questions, without any further ado, uh, I'll have Dr. Maddox come up and give his uh, next talk. I, I don't, again, I don't think Dr. Maddox needs any further introductions, but uh, again, I think he's going to talk about our enthusiasm for Reboa and uh, make sure that uh, we're using that uh, in the right setting at the right time. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I have a disclosure. My professional union card is that of a cardiothoracic vascular surgeon. I trained as such, was hired at Bader College of Medicine to be such. Trauma has been my uh, hobby. Since the late 1960s, I have had an almost daily interaction with balloons and catheters and was very co have been very comfortable with them. Uh, they... Um, I've always been enamored with advances in this technology. I um, worked with uh, devices that looked very much like the current devices as early as the late 1960s and early 1970s, reported on, on, on them indirectly during 1975. <clears throat> I reported <clears throat> around the world that there is all sorts of new innovation uh, that we can do, especially in the massively hypotensive uh, patient with aorta, vena cava, portal vein, or pelvic fractures. And I was looking forward to uh, the re wave of research that has now started. Reboa is not new. It is merely the current concept design. As such, unless there's any misunderstanding at the end of the talk, it is not ready for prime time. In concept, design, protocol, indications, or contraindications, and I look forward to sharing with this global audience my views and concerns about the current state of Reboa. I'm not wanting to kill it. I wanted to move forward. It is on the verge of a series of reports that will, like many other things, like hypertonic saline, which I also think might have been good, and artificial blood, because of faulty early research, those were killed for maybe 20 years. I don't want to see that with interaortic balloons. So as such, I want to give some Reboa uh, cautions. The pendulum is swinging. We have had resuscitation devices in the past, such as this tobacco smoke enema uh, bellows, 1750 to 1812. And this was inserted into the rectum, hot air injected, when this is the origin of blowing smoke up one's ass. This was carried by resuscitators. It soon went away. I don't want to see that happen with Reboa. So there are cautions and caution areas about Reboa. The area, access, where it's used, the branches, time, and uh, how one adds extra ports, for instance, to inject dye and uh, other material. <clears throat> I already shared with you that there are major trauma centers that exist in the world that have never had a survivor from a major aortic injury and continue to have from massive pelvic fractures as high as a 50% mortality. 
Reboa and its lookalikes ought to be used by those individuals who already have a good track record with major abdominal vascular uh, and pelvic uh, injuries. There are individual surgeons who haven't even successfully applied vascular clamps to control the bleeding in major abdominal bleeding. The survival rate I showed you this morning today is equal or worse than it was in the 1970 to 1985 time factor. There are essential steps in dealing with a person with such injury. Survival at the scene, transport to a trauma center, access in the emergency room or the operating room, and by whom, control of bleeding, and how one controls that bleeding. Controlling of the bleeding with a clamp, wherever it is, or with a balloon, is just the first step. If you don't know what to do next, don't touch the balloon. And then reconstruct. That should be accomplished within a 30-minute period of time of when you occlude the celiac and the abdominal uh, vascular uh, circulation. There are a number of direct tool of tools, direct pressure, proximal tourniquet, junctional control, which I find fault with, foam and crock clamps, which are still in the development phase, EC thoracotomy, laparotomy, and then various balloon catheters, which have been used since the Korean War. I will not get into, uh, and, and the uh, EC thoracotomy, as you know, takes five to 12 uh, seconds and it has its own morbidity. <clears throat> there have been studies comparing balloons to EC thoracotomy. Those are faulted in their concept and should be outright rejected because it's true, true, and unrelated, answered C on the national board exam. The balloon surrogates, uh, uh, the, the balloon is only a surrogate for proximal aortic clamping. When with, and if you have a major injury, vascular injury, proximal control has been a um, major principle forever and ever and ever. It is what and how quickly after aortic occlusion that repair and restoration of flow is achieved that is a critical issue. Crit that is misspelled. <clears throat> it is patently clear that it is essential that the technical adept trauma or vascular surgeon should manage the balloon policies, and technical insertion. Let me repeat. Paramedics, EMTs, emergency physicians, intensivists, pediatric immunological psychiatrists, dermatologists, and their ilk should not be futzing with this balloon. I was disappointed to see that the current wave of the balloon is being marketed with emergency medicine, EC, on the front of it. REBOA stands for those things that you know we don't need to repeat. As early as 1975, a variety of interaortic balloon occlusion was done by a team of individuals who at that time had the best results reportable for open aortic, iliac, portal vein, and vena cava injuries. That was 40 years ago. These trauma surgeons had an impression that it was going to be good, but they abandoned it after significant use, and they abandoned it because it, number one, did not result in any, any better results. I shared those numbers with you earlier. What are the components of Reboa? A pilot needle, a pilot wire, done percutaneously or on a cut down, a dilator, a sheath, a long wire, balloon ports, and then a prosthesis. Focus, can, the controversies are focusing on the device, focus on where it's inserted, operating room should be where it is, focus on the balloon being the solution, wrong, focus on, focus on the turf issues of getting the balloon in the artery, who ought to do it? Surgeon. That's been 
around the aorta or major pelvic fractures in the past, and controversy about lack of focus on timing. So, each three-minute delay in the emergency room adds 1% mortality. Add it up, and you have the results. If you compare REBOA to OPEN, the access, control, exposure, and repair are all important, with the repair after the first three being the, the uh, uh, most important. Survival is most dependent on the skill and speed of what happens after control and exposure. It is my view that that should be accomplished within 30 minutes. This is the device that was used in the, Viet in the Korean War. Uh, other devices now exist. You've seen them. I don't need to re, uh, repeat them. So the Reboa realities are there are hemorrhagic shock priorities. We've talked about those. Role of aortic occlusion. It can be helpful, but once occluded, then ischemia to the gut, the renals, the spinal cord arteries, and others begins. Adopting Reboa and or the follow-throughs and Reboa is merely an extremely crude, poorly designed device that we've had now for almost 40 years. And the additions to the Reboa have not been thought about because the designers hadn't been there very often to repair aortas. There are practice recommendations, quality review recommendations that from the papers I've read, and I think I've read every single one of them, would cause me, if I were FDA, to stop development of this balloon immediately. To me, that is a problem. I've been there, I've seen that data before, done that, and I raised the caution flag in order for us to preserve this important future technology that I think is more important than anything we've done in the aorta before, including medial visceral rotation. Thank you for letting me share my views with you. Thank you a lot, Dr. Matox. Is there any question from the audience? Peter? Wait a minute, I wasn't, I wasn't through yet. <laughs> Rule number one, find the bleeding ASAP, control it. Rule number two, don't restart bleeding or make it worse or create new issues. Rule number three, anything that does not meet rule one and two is very bad. Rule number four, a bleeding patient belongs in the OR. That's enough. <laughs> so what is your argument other than the fact that emergency medicine physicians are not surgeons, that they cannot put in this catheter? You didn't listen to the last 17 minutes. <laughs> No, I don't have a single argument. I, uh, I, I've looked at all the literature. I've seen papers report, uh, presented where the complications that I knew about were not reported. And um, I know the complications that have occurred in the past. I've know, I know what is uh, desired on the part of people who are comfortable around um, uh, the aorta, the iliacs, the portal vein, and the vena cava and this balloon does not meet those specifications. But, but I do believe that <clears throat> it is a requirement for you to have a complication that you have to be alive. Is it not better to be but that's, alive that's true, true and, and have a complication? That sounds like a political <laughs> argument for me to vote for one of the two candidates for president, even though I don't like either one of them. <laughs> but the answer is yes, but you don't have to have those complications. Okay, well thank you very much, Dr. Maddox. <clears throat>